What's going on guys, Skill 37 here, and today's review is going to be for Enslaved for the PlayStation 3. Another day, another game beaten. Been playing that Medal of Honor online, I'm digging it a lot. But I will say, the game is glitchy as shit, and definitely is in need of a patch. And it's crazy how the game runs off two different engines. The campaign, graphically, and the way the game plays is like 100% different than how it plays online. It looks different, it feels different, it plays different. It's like two different games in one. So the review might be not might not be out for a few days because I'm really into the online. I like it a lot, but it's glitchy as fuck, and I gotta play more of the campaign. And um, yeah, it's just it's just this gonna be one. It's, it's gonna be a really interesting review because Metal of Honor is just it's different. And I'm not gonna go out and say it's great because it's not. But it's fun as hell. I think the online is real. Like once they patch it and they, and they fix the freezing issues with people signing in and out and a couple other things, the online is very fucking solid. I love, love sniping in Medal of Honor. It's so fucking fun. But yeah, let's talk about this game. I've seen a lot of reviews for this game. Giving it these really random high scores because talk about some amazing story and shit. And I'm just really here to say that this game is a rent, a 100% rent at the most, it is an average video game, it does nothing very, it does nothing great, it does, it brings nothing new to the table, and everything it borrows from other games, okay, you know what, not borrow, everything it does, the other games, you know, do, it doesn't do them better in any, you know, form or way, does it make it a bad game, no, absolutely not, actually, it's a very fun game, just a very fun average game. The platforming is very quick. The animations of the character is actually pretty damn simple and it feels like they ain't really put much into the fucking animations into the fucking platforming and shit like that. Because when you got games like Prince of Persia and Assassin's Creed, especially Assassin's Creed, where you're climbing up walls and shit, and you know, Ezio really does look like a human being going up these walls, you know, that becomes a standard. Then you play games like Uncharted 1 and 2, where Nathan Drake looks like a real fucking human being, and he's doing all this kind of Hollywood-style platforming. You get, you get kind of used to that. So then when you're playing Slave, and the guy looks like he's glitching all over the fucking place, or he hops from pole to pole, and he's all, like, flipping in midair, and all of a sudden his body just, like, defies the laws of physics and ends up in a different position just to grab onto the next piece. It's like Enslaved is what Call of Duty is to the FPS genre. Enslaved feels like an arcade platformer. It's very fast, very simple. I think Enslaved's strongest points is really just the two characters, um, Trip and Monkey, especially Monkey. I like Monkey's character design. I like his attitude. I love his really random Bronx accent. Like he has a straight Bronx accent or Brooklyn, whatever. Trip is very fucking helpless without him and... There's a very strong, obvious connection between the two characters. And that's really what kept me going, is just to find out more about these two characters. The voice acting of these two characters is spot on. But other than that, like sound effects and everything else about the game is just really fucking meh. So let's talk about the story. The story is actually, you know, starts off real good. Then gets real boring. Then when the game gets to the ending part, when you get to the end of the game, it gets really good, actually. It's just sad that you have to go through the entire game just to get the story to actually kick it up a notch, and then it fucking ends, and you're all like, okay? So what happens is, um, the world's basically fucked up. Mechs are running everywhere. The game starts off, you're on a slave ship, and Monkey sees Trip escaping, and Monkey's all like, bitch, come back here. So you get out the your little cage shit. When you finally catch up the trip, she's on an escape pod. You jump on the escape pod. You fucking go flying a hundred fucking thousand miles somewhere. And when you wake up, there's a headband on your head. And he's all like, what the fuck is this shit? So he gets up and he sees Trip and he's all, you know, what is this on my head? And, and she's all like, I, I put the slave man on your head. He's all like, bitch, what? I'm gonna go fucking kill you and shit. He goes, gets next to her. She's all like, stop. Bow down to a true pimp, bitch. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh, my head and shit. And basically, how the game is... The headband is her fucking ace in the hole. With the headband on, she controls, you know, Monkey. Monkey has to do what she says, or else he gets like a crazy electric shock to the head. If he ventures too far from her, 
he can die, and if she dies or her heart rate stops or whatever, then he dies. So basically, you play this entire game, which is, you know, a little mixture of action, platforming, and you got to actually protect this bitch. And uh, what's, good, what's really good about the game, though, is the fact that the game's pacing is well done. Like, the act sequences are quick, straightforward. Uh, there are sequences where you got to work with her to get from point A to point B. You got to distract enemies for her to get from point A to point B. And it works really well because her AI isn't stupid. And you get to tell her what to do. And the game doesn't put no real emphasis at all on you having to take care of her. It's just there are segments where you got to really just, you know, keep your eye on her. The game does a good job at keeping the pacing at a, you know, spot on without... You're not going to be frustrated, basically, in this game. That's one, you know, that's one thing I can really say about this. You're not going to be frustrated. Ninja Theory did a good job at getting pacing down properly. Now, what really, I got to get something. there. What really got to me is even the same people made fucking Heavenly Sword for the PS3. You tell me why that they all of a sudden make a multi-platform game and the PS3 version is really bad. The frame rate in this game is all over the place. It's not that it's distracting, but when you go from fighting sequence to platforming and the frame rate just starts skipping, Sometimes the game might occasionally freeze for a couple seconds. And the graphics are really weird in this game. Like, like early in the game, the graphics really are boring as shit and just lame. And as you progress through the game, the game looks nicer at some points. Or there's more detail on the main characters themselves. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? And then once in a while, you, your characters will talk outside of a cutscene. And their mouths aren't moving. They move all weird and shit. Then when they're in a cutscene, the game actually looks really good. It's like there's no consistency with the graphics engine at all it's so weird so let me could talk back with the story the story is she just basically needs your help to get back to her homeland obviously you know you know things when you when you get back to where you know let's put it this way it's very predictable she puts the fucking headband on your head you're her fucking slave she wants to get back to her homeland you get there shit's all fucked up and then that's when the game really starts to kick off and she wants to get revenge and shit and monkey's all like let's do this and that's it. Simple, straight to the point, not bad at all. It just doesn't impress. It, you know, the way it's played out, it's really simple throughout the entire game and doesn't really pick up to the end. And then the ending itself, while I did understand the ending fully, I felt that I just played a fucking eight hour campaign for that kind of ending. Like, it was just so lame. I was really disappointed with this game's fucking ending. I was like, yo, this is retarded. Are you serious? Like, how the hell you get a good game with, with a really decent pacing? You give me an ending like this. What the fuck? It's retarded. So the story is just going to get a fucking... It's going to get a pass the score for me. It's alright. It's nothing too special. Uh, whatever. The sound of this game is... I got to say, like... Average, again. Nothing other than the voices of Monkey and Trip sound good. The ambiance is boring. The sound of your fucking little monkey staff hitting enemies is alright. And that's about it. And that's all I can really say about the sound. I mean, there's not really much sound in the game. And the sound that actually is in the game, like music and shit, isn't all that entertaining, period. So I actually going to give the sound a thumbs fucking down. The controls for the game are pretty spot on. If you play one platformer, like, you know, you played them all. You can play Prince of Persia, Assassin's Creed, or Uncharted. Then you've played Enslaved. And that's one, that's another thing I can say about this game. If you like those kind of games, you're going to like Enslaved. Like, every game has its own style of platforming. Prince of Persia has the whole rewind system. Assassin's Creed, guys, in my opinion, Assassin's Creed is the most realistic platforming. Aside from the fact that you can jump off a fucking thousand foot church, land in a stack of hay and be fine. But the platforming in Assassin's Creed is realistic. You're just hopping from little rooftop to rooftop. You do, you know, believable shit. And then there's Uncharted. Where Nathan Drake has the power of Hollywood in the fucking in the palm of his hand. He can jump from building to building and land without breaking his fucking legs or arms. And I think that's pretty fucking cool also. Enslaved has a more arcadey feel when it comes to the platforming. Monkey jumps from you know spot to spot really fucking quick. There's no like no realistic feel or struggle with the control. He literally just hops and hops and hops like he's a fucking jackrabbit, you know, with fucking gravity boots on. And he does he basically literally denies all the laws of physics with the way this guy, you know, just jumps from spot to spot. But that makes for a very arcadey, fast experience that people might actually like that. They might prefer that over Assassin's Creed Realism or Uncharted's Hollywood take on platforming or Prince of Persia's Little Rewind system. 
So the controls, responsive, the platform is good. And uh, let's talk about the gameplay in general. This game's combat is really hit and miss. It's a hit in the sense that the combat's very satisfying when you fight enemies. The miss is there's like maybe four or five fucking you know things you can do in combat. You can press square to swing. You can press triangle to strike. There are no combos in the sense like square, triangle, square, triangle. No. It's either you press square or you press fucking triangle. Or you can hold L2 to make your fucking staff a, a gun in a sense where you can stun enemies or hit them with like an electric blast. And you can buy moves or in a sense power up already existing moves that are for the most part useless. You can block in this game is retarded. The counter system in this game is very unfucking reliable. Uh, there's one really good move in the game where if you attack your opponents a lot, your staff will glow, and if you press triangle and circle, monkey will unleash this crazy fucking combo that will not, you know, you know, kill any enemy. What's so it's a miss in a sense. There's not much you can do in combat, but it's a hit in the sense that the combat's very satisfying, and the fact that the game does not put any real strong emphasis on combat. You're not gonna be fighting a lot in this game, so the few fights you do have. You're not going to really feel like it's too repetitive because you're not going to be fighting that often. There's more platforming and puzzles than anything. Oh, and the boss fights in this game are downright atrocious. I don't know what the fuck anyone in any review is thinking when they say the boss battles are fun. You fight one boss fucking twice, and he's retarded if you know how to you know exploit his weakness. And the second, and another boss, you're fighting some kind of fucking Ryan that charges at you. That's not even really a boss fight. The only good boss fight is the final boss fight. It takes you like 15, 20 minutes to fucking beat because it's a, it's a long fucking process. That was the only good boss fight. All the other boss fights are stupid as shit. I don't even consider them boss fights. They're just really strong enemies. But so, uh, yeah. Another thing. You fight the same fucking enemies in this game like so many times. You're going to fight the, a combat mech, which is like all black, a red mech, and a blue mech. And some, sometimes mechs come out and they can shoot you and they got shields and shit. It very repetitive enemies. Like, you will fight the same mechs over and over. So even though you don't fight that much, you will notice this immediately that you fight the same fucking enemies over and over. And that gets so annoying. But, yeah. Like I said, the game spacing is done correctly. So you're not going to... Unless you're like me, you notice small things. You're not going to really notice the fact that the combat's really shallow. But since there's not much combat in the game... You're not gonna really feel like it's shit, but if you're like me and you notice shit like this, you're gonna be like, "Oh my god, what the fuck?" The game is about six, eight hours long. I said what I gotta say about the game. It's not bad. Don't spend sixty bucks on this game. Definitely rent it. Another good thing I can say about this game: it's very easy to platinum this game. Very easy to get your thousand achievement points. So if you're looking at it from that sense, you can rent this game for a few days, get a lot of easy fucking trophies and and you know regular achievements. Very easy to platinum this game. So if you're a platinum, you know, Hunter, this is your game. If you like platform games in general, this is your game. Just don't expect nothing too fucking amazing. And it's, dead, like I said, not worth 60 bucks. Final score for this game, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Good rent. Matter of fact, it's an excellent rent. Do not buy this shit, though, like I did. I can afford that, though. But I'm starting to regret it because I could have used that money for something else. But, yeah, next week, week after, Fallout 3 and Vanquish. Yes! So thank you for watching this review. I'm going to go play some Medal of Fucking Honor. And once again, 7 out of 10. Uh, everything I just talked about and extra information about the game can be found in the video description below. Peace.